everybody and welcome back to another video here on my channel. Today's video is going to be set up for the most part like the last vehicle related video I posted which was putting on headers onto my truck and I can link that up here if anybody is curious. Originally with that video I had planned to do it completely different but of course we ran into issues and also I was off and on and Josh sometimes baby duty so it was actually really difficult to try and keep cameras recording so instead I did like a story time and imported all the videos and photos over top of it and I felt like this one would be really nice to do the same. I did take a little bit more videos but for the most part we were just kicking butt this time. We did very good I feel like. So I want to do the story time because I feel like it's a little bit easier and you can see everything that we did. When we finally received my cam in the mail, Josh was still on a trip at the time and we knew that he was gonna have a couple days off. So we did take advantage of that and tried to plan my truck around when he was gonna be off. And when he finally was able to come home, we instantly the next day tried to start on my truck, which was fun. <laughs> Honestly, it was actually really fun this time. We first started the day by going to Home Depot, picking up an electric ratchet, which I highly recommend instead of doing it by hand or anything else. If you can afford one, definitely get one. It makes your life so much easier. I feel like that's one reason that we whipped through this whole project and it came in handy a lot, actually. <laughs> We went to Home Depot, got an electric ratchet, and then we also went to Harbor Freight to pick up some other supplies that we needed. Things like a polar for the harmonic balancer. We also picked up a bucket for all the antifreeze that we were hoping to reuse if it was clean enough. And then finally, around 2 probably or 3 p.m., we came back home and began to start on my truck. Josh had one side of my engine bay and I had the other and we just started by taking off anything that we could so that being cold packs plugs wires cold air intake everything and then when we met in the middle for the most part we ended up staying on the driver's side and taking everything down to the heads once we removed the heads it was getting kind of late but we decided to try and clean up as much as we could on that side of the block and also the heads and open everything see what we're for the most part dealing with we got really excited we ended that night basically with the heads off and we were just cleaning up for the most part it was really fast uh for the most part simple day we didn't have any issues honestly the next day we rode around and we were determined to get those springs changed out and then get as far as we could on the passenger side or just in general so Josh started by going to O'Reilly's and picking up, of course, gasket sets, some lube, and also a spring compressor for the valves. That was sort of a challenge in the beginning because Josh and I technically work together very well, but under the circumstances of trying to put everything together when doing the springs, I was just more in Josh's way than I was helping him, so we ended up not doing it together and he just did it himself because he found a way that he didn't necessarily have to hold the head and pull. It was a lot easier to do the method that we found and for the most part it worked actually extremely well. While he was doing that I went over to my engine bay and I was taking off like the plastic coverings for my grill and we knew for the most part we were going to have to take out at least the radiator we had originally thought all the way out to my bumper but instead we found out we didn't need to take out the AC condenser or anything like that it was just the radiator so I started by taking out all the bolts for all the hoses we put all the bolts, any single bolt that we took out, we put in black baggies and we labeled them so we knew exactly where they went. And I think that worked out better than when we did my headers because we had a few bolts left over somehow. Once Josh finished the driver's side heads and springs, basically we started to tackle the whole passenger side. And again, we got all the way down to the heads and started to do those springs. There was, we're not really sure if it was like a rat's nest, cause mind you, I bought my truck when I was 17 and she had 216,000 miles on her and she sat for sure in somebody's yard. Somewhere along the lines, she had basically like a rat's nest on top, sitting on top of the valley cover. And I 
honestly that surprised me i didn't i didn't understand why it was so dirty and josh said with the amount because we also found a crap ton of walnuts and other things from back home he said the amount that was there honestly i was probably lucky to not have started a fire and there was a lot <laughs> let me just tell you there was a lot and also there were nuts and walnuts in my heads for some reason which they didn't affect my driving that i know of but when Josh went to go put on my heads, one toppled out somehow. So it was a fun experience to find stuff inside my truck that if I would have never taken it apart, I would have never known about. After finding all that lovely stuff on my valley cover, we did switch it out. I got to see exactly what AFM looks like for my truck and it is so so much stuff it's so ugly <laughs> ugly i'm so glad that we finally got rid of it we did get down to taking off the timing cover chain everything like that too for the most part we ended up not dropping the oil pan because we did it when we put on my headers but of course we were not expecting to do it now it's because um yeah, we just did not expect that for, in order for the oil pump to come down, you have to kind of take down your pan and we didn't want to fuel with that. So we did take out two bolts and we left the timing chain and we replaced the timing sprocket at the top, but we did not take out my oil pump. We did not drop the pan. We just, we were so done at this point for the most part. It was going good, but we just were so excited to finish it and we didn't want to respend the money to do everything with my oil again, so we left it. And my Josh said my chain was actually really tight still, so hopefully it'll last for a very long time. We ended up getting down to the point, I think this was around 6 p.m. or so, and we were able to take out my stock cam. That was exciting and nerve wracking for Josh. He had, he let me take it out and I let him put the new one in, which is the BTR Truck Norris. And when it was coming out, it was all fine. Josh kept <laughs> telling me to be careful of the lobes. Obviously you don't want to break them off, especially inside of a block. Josh was able to get a video of me taking out my cam. It's not going to be necessarily the best, but it is a nice, fun experience and I'm so thankful that I got to have this experience. And Josh put in the new cam, obviously we lubricated it very well. Then we started by trying to put everything back together and that wasn't so bad. We ended up getting all the way to the top of the block, basically the intake manifold, everything like that on up is what we had left. We didn't do plugs or wires yet. and. That night, we called it quits because we were working. As soon as we went up, we got up. We would work until the sun started to set. And by that time, it was 7.30 going on 8. The sun was already going down and Josh wanted just to relax. I decided I wanted to try and help him out to give him that last day. And maybe I shouldn't have done this, but I think it worked out good. Um, I messed up. I will admit, I messed up. I... I am so used, even though this is not an excuse, I am so used to only using a torque wrench when doing lug nuts. And if you can imagine doing a hundred something foot pounds, you can imagine the click that a torque wrench makes. So for me, I had the job of putting back my intake manifold and I was putting the bolts in, hand tightening them. And then I went to go torque them down. I'm pretty sure what I seen was around like seven foot pounds. And all of a sudden, <laughs> I was not hearing at all and not feeling a click because it's so quiet to me with the smaller torque wrench. And I did not realize that it was actually clicking because I had already torqued it multiple times. And instead I ended up over torquing and breaking the bolt, sadly. And I had to go inside, tell Josh what I did. Thankfully he was extremely understanding. This is only the second bolt I've ever broken in my life. And the other one was one of the seat bolts that holds in my back seat. So it's not something that's really major. And this one was a whole new, like scared me. I felt like we were gonna have to take the heads back off on the passenger side. Cause of course it was the very first bolt that you're supposed to torque down in the sequence. And you know, Josh came out here, he tried so bad to pull it out, get it out, nothing worked. So he decided just to go ahead, ignore it because it is in the middle for one. And two, I technically don't have to worry. It's one of those where it's like a fine line. If it did show signs of a leak, obviously we would have to fi fix it, but 
he was just hoping that we, we wouldn't have a leak or anything. And so far, everything's good. I guess we'll find out after the tune. We went ahead and I felt bad about doing that because I just wanted him to have a nice day the next day, but I ruined it, of course. So he ended up coming back out and we both worked together to try and finish my truck. We put in the intake manifold, finished that at least. Uh, we put on the coal packs, cold air intake, plugs, wires, fixed the dipstick tube. We also reattached the headers. We did everything. We finished that night. It was around 12, maybe one in the morning. So we could not start her up. The very last day rolls around and we were so excited to start her up. And I honestly thought she was gonna take two, at least two tries to start up. She obviously was gonna still sit there and fight for her life, try and figure it all out. Well, she ended up starting on the first try and that amazed me. She sounds to me really, really good. Um, I know after the tune, she's gonna sound hopefully so much better, get more in rhythm and you can hear the cam a little bit more. I'm so excited. I cannot wait till she gets back from the tuners. Um, yeah, <laughs> we've waited already a week as I'm filming this now. Like I said in the other video, I do have long tube headers and also super 44s currently. So I do not have cutouts, sadly, we will do that eventually, but now I have the BTR Truck Norris cam with a full DOD delete. I'm going to import the clips that I did take revolving around when we started her and then let her sit there and idle. Hope you guys enjoy it so much. so much for watching this video i hope you guys all enjoyed it if you did make sure to hit that like red subscribe button whichever and also go ahead and check out my headers video like i said it's not how i exactly had plans but i still actually kind of like the video and hopefully this one turns out just as good hope to see y'all in the next vehicle related video and god bless